Um, I just passed back your quiz. Anybody have any problems on that quiz that they really want to go over before we start our new stuff for the day? Um, now that you have the quizzes back, by the way, they're not necessarily done. Um, unless you have, had them all right, any of the ones you got wrong, you can redo and turn it back in. Just make sure you show your work when you redo them. And when you're doing them the first time, I don't necessarily force you to show your work. I won't mark them wrong if it's not there. But when you redo them, you have to show me your work. And I'll give you back up to half your points. So if you had a 7 out of 9, that turns into an 8 out of 9. Which the one point doesn't sound like much, but you know, if it's a point on every quiz for the whole semester, that can be a significant bump by the end of the semester. <clears throat> Okay, so we left off on Friday. We were working with fractions. We did kind of the workshop thing where we um, did all the different converting of fractions from one form to another. So today we're going to review that a little bit as we're going through our operations with fractions. So back last week on Tuesday, we looked at problems like this. Or we looked at a problem or two like that, and we said we could not add those because they have different names. When we add fractions, as we mentioned, we're always told you must have common denominator. So our first step is to look at these and to give them different names, or to give them the same name, I should say, change their names. But the first thing we need to do is figure out what that same name is going to be. And there are a few different ways we can go about that. One of them is to make a list. You know, we know this one is 5, so that can be changed to anything that is a multiple of 5. So we know that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. We don't really need to make that list out for the 5 because we know what those numbers are going to be. We'll recognize them when we get to them. For the 3's, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So that's one way if we're stumped, we can just start making lists like that until we find a number that's in common. 15 is the smallest number that's in both lists. That's our least common denominator. Another way you could do it is just multiply them together. 3 times 5 is 15. Now that won't always be the smallest one, and we've always been taught we should have the least one. But we really don't have to. It'll still work. We don't have to have the least common denominator. We just have to have a common denominator to make this work. And, of course, for many of you, as you do more and more of these, you're just going to get to the point where you can look at them and you know, hey, 3 and 5, it's going to be 15. So, anyway, we're going to change both of these to 15. To change this one, what did we multiply the 3 by to turn it into a 15? 5. So, we have to multiply the top of that fraction by the same number, 5 as well. So, 1 times 5 is 5. Down here, what do we have to multiply the 5 by to turn it into a 50? 3. So we have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. So 2 times 3 is 6. Now that they have the same name, they have a <coughs> common denominator, we, just like always, combine the counts and keep the same name. So we combine the 5 and the 6, make 11, and we keep the 15th. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time today on simple fractions. We're going to jump right up to mixed numbers. Something like this. So I'm going to rewrite this like I did before. For me, I always seem to, to do better with addition when I write it vertically. I just, for some reason, it makes more sense to me that way. Now here, you'll see that I just, I lined up my digits. You know, I only have ones here, so I lined up the ones with the ones. And I kind of tacked my fraction on the end of it, almost like it's just the last digit of the number. And actually, that's really what it is. A fraction is nothing more than just the last digit of a number. So now we're going to rename those. I, re, I always rewrite the whole numbers too, so I don't forget about them and lose track of them. So we have fourths and eighths. What's our common denominator going to be? Eight. Sometimes one of the denominators is already the common denominator. So the eighths are not going to change. So this will stay three eighths. 
This, of course, is going to turn into 8. So what do we have to multiply the 4 by to make it an 8? 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. So now we go ahead and add 2 eighths and 3 eighths make 5 eighths. 4 and 7? 11. Now our mixed numbers don't always stay that simple either. We run into ones like this. So of course here, common, we still need our common denominator, which is going to be what? 12. Okay. So I rewrite my whole number, get my common denominator. What's this one going to be? 8. Good. How about this one? 9. So now we go to add. We've got 8 plus 9 is 17, 12. So what's wrong with that? It's an improper fraction. There really isn't anything wrong with it. We just prefer it in a different form. So what are we going to reduce that to? Perfect. 12 goes into 17 once, and there are 5 left over. So 5 12. So just like any other number, we're going to keep part of it and carry part of it. We're going to keep the 5 12 and we'll carry the 1. 1 and 8 makes 9, plus 5 is 14. So 4 carry over the 1. 14 and 5 12. What do you think? Better than sharp stick in the eye? For now? Okay. Next, we'll hit subtraction. Again with subtraction. I always like to do it vertically just because that's how my mind works. If your mind works differently, that's fine. Do it however works better for you. Once again, I'm going to line up that fraction as though it's the last digit of the number, because that's what it really is. And just like addition, we still need a common denominator. 4 and 6, what's it going to be? 12. Perfect, 12. This will be 9 and 2. So we'll go ahead and subtract. Just like with any other number, just like whole numbers, we're going to start on the right and work our way back to the left. 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, 7 twelfths. We combine the counts, 9, and two minus, uh, 9 minus 2 is 7, and keep the same name. 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 and 7 twelfths. Just like with addition, it doesn't stay so simple. We can run into things like this. So once again, I'm going to rewrite this. And once again, we need a common denominator, which in this case is going to be 40. Good. What's this one going to become? 16. And this one? 35. Now let's pause here for a second before anything more. Is there anybody that's not quite sure how we're getting these numbers? You want me to go over that? Okay. Yeah, if you multiply the two of them, it'll always give you a common denominator. It might not be the smallest one. Like up here, if we'd have done that here, you know, 4 times 6 would have been 24. It still would have worked. 4 times 6 is 24, 3 times 6 would be 18, 6 times 4, so 1 times 4 is 4. You'd subtract, and you'd get 14 24s, which is reduced to 7 12s. So you still get the same answer, it's just another step because you're going to have to reduce. It's just a little bit more work is all. But yeah, it'll always work. It'll always give you the correct answer if you go through the steps and reduce. Okay, so... 16 minus 35. Can't be done. We have to borrow. So we're going to borrow here and make this an 8. But what we borrowed was one whole object. And when we're dealing with fractions, whole objects get broken into pieces. How do we know how many pieces to break it into? 40. 40. Our denominator is 40. That tells us it's 40 pieces. 
So we had 16, we borrowed 40 more pieces, we do have 56 fortieths. And now we subtract. 56 minus 35 is 21 fortieths. And then 8 minus 2 is 6. So 6 and 21 fortieths. <clears throat> Let's do another one of those. So again, we'll set it up vertically, 37 and 1 sixth minus 19 and 3 fourths. Common denominator, 12. What's this going to become? 2. And this one? No. So once again, we go to subtract 2 minus 9 is a problem. We're going to borrow. So this become a 6. What's this going to become? 14. Good. We borrowed a 12. Because there's 12 in the denominator. So 2 plus 12 is 14 twelfths. So now 14 minus 9. 5 twelfths. 6 minus 9. We've got to borrow again. This will be a 2 and a 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. 2 minus 1 is 1. 17 and 5 twelfths. What do you think? Okay, so that's addition and subtraction. Nothing different from what we've seen before. Let's look at multiplication. Something like this. Well, let's hold off on that. Let's come back to that one. Let's do this. We'll start out with simple fractions first. We'll come back to the next numbers. Um, when we're multiplying, just like any other form of numbers, we combine the counts, but we also combine the names. And in fractions, that turns out to be just multiplying straight across. So here we'll do that. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 5 is 20. And of course, we look at that and we see that we can reduce both of those by 2. Give me a 1 times. Now, some of you might be looking at that thinking, why didn't he cross cancel? Or some of you called cross multiply. Some of you right now might be wondering, what's cross cancel? Well, if you look at it, you know the top of this is going to end up being 1 times 2, the bottom is going to end up being 4 times 5. You might see that both the 4 and the 2 can be divided by 2. So we could actually divide that out before we multiply. So you divide the two by the four by two to get two, the two by two to get one. Now when you multiply, you've got one times one is one. Two times five is ten. It's a one ten. In a problem like this one, it's about the same amount of work either way. To multiply first and then reduce or to reduce first. But you can run into problems like this. Where you could multiply this out. I mean, 24 times 35 is 840. And 25 times 36 is 900. And then you could reduce that out if you want to. Are both of those divisible by like 60? Something like that. Or you could reduce it down to divide them by 10 and by 2 and whatever. Um, but it would be a lot simpler look at this and say, hey, what, well, first of all, you tell me what can I cross cancel here? 25 and 35 can both be divided by 5 to give me 5 and 7. Anything else? These can be divided by 6, would give me 4 and 6. Am I done? Those can be divided by 2 again to give me 2 and 3. Just like when we're reducing fractions, we could have divided the 24 and 36 both by 12, but just like when we're reducing fractions, we don't have to see the largest number. Sometimes we can go just in steps like that. We saw the 6, so we took out the 6. We realized we could still divide by 2. So now, 
2 times 7 is 14, 5 times 3 is 15, which is what we would have got, we would have ended up at if we'd reduced the 840 over 900. It's just a little bit simpler to reduce it first. Okay, now with that said, let's go back to our next numbers. So 5 and 2 thirds times 7 and 1 fourth. Multiplying mixed numbers is an extremely difficult process. In fact, if we were to go well, to any university and find 10 math majors, I'd be shocked if even one of them can show you the proper way to multiply mixed numbers. So how do we do it? There you go. We cheat. We don't do it. We're making them an improper fraction. So this is going to become how many thirds? 17 thirds. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17 thirds. How about this one? That's 4, by the way. 29. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 1 is 29. Now, at this point, if there was anything that could cross cancel, we could still cross cancel because we're multiplying fractions. Here, there's nothing that'll divide out. So then what? Yeah, we multiply. 17 times 29 is. Is that 493? Is that right? 3 times 4 is 12. Is my 493 right? Yeah. Okay, good. It's early in the morning. Wanted to make sure. So now we're going to reduce that. We're going to do the 493 divided by 12. 12 goes into 49 four times. It'll be 48. That's 1. Bring down the 3. 12 goes into 13 once with 1 left over. So that's 41 and 1 twelfth. What do you think? Not so bad. Anybody curious to see how you'd actually multiply the next numbers? Okay. Well, let's take a look at it. When we multiply, um, just like when we multiply whole numbers, you'd have to do the 4 times 7, but also the 4 times 3. Same thing here. This 1 fourth has to multiply the 2 thirds, but it also has to multiply the 5. So we're going to do 1 fourth times 2 thirds is 2 over 12, otherwise reduced to 1 sixth. Then we have the 1 fourth times 5. How do I multiply a fraction by whole number? That's it? There you go. Yeah, be 5 over 1. Plus it's 5 fourths or 1 and 1 fourth. Now I'm over to the 7. I have to do 7 times 2 thirds. Same thing. I'm going to make that 7 over 1 times 2 thirds. 7 times 2 is 14. 1 times 3 is 3. So that is what, 4 and 2 thirds. And then 7 times 5. Is 35. So now the next step is I have to make these all into common denominators, which looks like they're going to be 12s. When I have three of them like that, by the way, and I'm trying to find a common denominator, I look for things that make it easier. Here there's really only two numbers I need to worry about because three goes into six. So anything that's a common denominator with the 6 will also be a common denominator with the 3. So really all I'm worrying about is the three, the, the 6 and the 4 there. So anyway, this will be how many 12s? 2 here, 3, 3, and this one, 8. So 2 and 3 is 5, plus 8 is 13 12s. So 1 and 1 12. So I'm going to keep the 1 12, carry the 1. 1 and 2, or 1 and 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, plus 5 is 11, carry the 1. I get the same answer. Hopefully I should get the same one, right? The, over the improper fractions? They really want to see you suffer. I mean, technically that's the correct way to do it, but you can see it's a very long process. 
you end up with at least three fractions here, and you have to find common denominators and recombine. Uh, well, it kind of is, yeah. Well, if you heat it up with a lighter first, yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, there are reasons for knowing how to do it, because when you get into algebra and polynomials, that's how you combine polynomials and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, realistically, if there's an easier way, do it the easier way. That's the last time, by the way, you'll ever see me multiply mixed numbers. I will always do them as improper fraction. Speaking of, let's go ahead and do another example that way just to make sure we, we get that last one out of our heads. Okay, so here, tell me what to do. So this is going to be 6 times 3 is 18 plus 3 is 20. So that's 20 thirds. Then what? Perfect. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 3 is 15 fourths. Now what? So the 3 and the 15 can both be divided by 3 to give me 5 and 1. You're good. Anything else? 20 and the 4 can be divided by 4 to give me 1 and 5. Be better, 5 and 1. So now I have 5 times 5 is 25. 1 times 1 is 1. It's 25. A lot of people are amazed that you can multiply two mixed numbers, two fractions, and get a whole number, but you can't. Well, let's do one that doesn't work out quite so neatly. That's it. Yeah, 25. They're combined in there with the mixed number, the improper fraction. Yeah, it's kind of weird to see one come out like that. Okay, tell me what to do here. 7 times 2 is 15 halves, okay. 22 over 5, okay, then what? Okay, 1 and 11. 3 and 1. 33 over 1, so just 33. Okay, enough of that. Okay, how about this one? Thirty-one over five, good. Six times five is thirty plus one is thirty-one. Over here? Seventeen over six. And then what? Nothing we can cross cancel, so we're just gonna multiply. It. Thirty-one times seventeen should be five twenty-seven. Five times six is thirty. So 527 divided by 30. Well, 30 will go into the 52 once. That's 22 left over. Bring down the 7. 30 goes into 227 seven times. That's 210. With 17 left over. So that's 17 and 17 thirtieths. What do you guys think? Still better than a sharp stick in your eye? Getting close. <laughs> <laughs> Better than a dull stick? No. Depends on how sharp and how far. Yeah. Okay, the next step, let's look at division. We have said that division follows the same rules as multiplication. And multiplication, we just multiply straight across. So does that mean we can divide straight across? Can I do 12 divided by 4 is 3, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and get 3 fifths? Does that work? Yeah. Is that the right answer? Yeah, it is. Does it work every time? Sure does. Why don't we do it that way? 
because not every problem is quite that neat. We could run into something like this. Oh, you're perfect. Yeah, and something like this. We, we could divide straight across, but 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, and it doesn't come out quite so neat. We have been taught to multiply by the reciprocal. Now, just like with negatives, though, it's not, we got to remember what number the operation is operating on. The 3 fourths isn't changing. That's going to stay. We're dividing by the 2 thirds. So dividing by the 2 thirds is going to get changed to multiplying by. Now, the reciprocal means you just flip it over. So 2 thirds becomes 3 halves is a reciprocal. And now it's multiplying. That look familiar? Some of you might have been taught something called the zigzag method. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. It's a gimmick. It's, I mean, it works, but it's junk. It makes them, I don't say, I won't say junk. I mean, it works, but it makes for a lot of mistakes. It really does. It's just, well, it's, it's another shortcut. It's, it's one step. You're gonna, we're going to look at just a second how this multiplying by reciprocal is a shortcut. This is just taking that shortcut a couple steps further and making it even less recognizable. So here now, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. So 9 eighths are 1 and 1 eighth. Where did that come from? And how does it have anything to do with this? Well, believe it or not, it came from this right here, just dividing straight across. Once upon a time, sounds like fairy tale time. When we went to divide, what we would do is we'd look at this. We're dividing by two thirds. So we're going to take two thirds, we're going to take two times three, which is six. So we're going to use that six to rename the number that we are dividing. So we're going to do 3 fourths times 6 over 6. So when we rename this, what's 3 times 6? 18, what's 4 times 6? 24. Now look what happens. Just like we did up here. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 24 divided by 3 is 8. It's 9 eighths or 1 and 1 eighth. How on earth did we get from this? to multiplying by a reciprocal. Not as big of a jump as you would think. Somewhere along the line, someone looked at this and realized, hey, if I cheat a little bit, if I fudge my order of operations just a little bit, and I do this part first, 6 over 6 divided by 2 thirds. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. I am always going to get this number flipped over, upside down. So they decided to name that the reciprocal. And now all that's left is to multiply. So that whole idea of taking a reciprocal and multiplying is a shortcut of this longer process we saw up here. It just always turns out that way, so they just decided to go ahead and define it to be that way. Like I said with whole numbers, division is the one operation they have changed and altered the most to make it look absolutely nothing like what it used to be, but it really is. <clears throat> okay, so let's, again, we're not going to waste time with just uh, simple fractions. We're going to jump into mixed numbers. Oh, what do I want to do here? We'll do something like this. Now, for mixed numbers, since when we divide fractions, we turn it into multiplication by a reciprocal, it would make sense that we do the same thing as we do when we multiply. We're going to change them into improper fractions. So what's this one going to become? 25 thirds. How about this one? 14 fifths. Is this multiplication now? No, it's still division. I have not done any reciprocals yet. Can I cross cancel? Is it multiplication now? Not yet, no. I can't yet cross cancel because it's division. I can only cross cancel in multiplication. 
Now the 25 thirds here, remember, doesn't change. It's the number we're dividing by. So that's going to become 5 fourteenths. Now it is multiplication. Now we could cross cancel if there was anything that would. Right now it doesn't appear that there's going to be anything. So we'll go ahead and multiply. 25 times 5 is 125. 3 times 14 is 42. Which is 2 and 41 40 seconds. What do you think? Good stuff? Absolutely not. Well, let's do one more example of that at least. What's that? <laughs> Tell me what to do. Okay, 7 times 4 is 28, plus 3 is 31 fours. 13, 6, okay. Still division. And then, make this one 4 over 31. Say no. That one stays the same. That one doesn't flip. This one flips. Right? 6 thirteenths, and now it's multiply. And then, yeah, we can cross cancel. The 4 and the 6 both divide by 2 to give me 2 and 3. And then, 31 times 3 is 93. 2 times 13 is 26. Which is going to give us 93 divided by 26 goes into 3 times. Which would be 70, not 72, what's it going to be? Yeah, 78. Which gives us 15. So 3 and 15, 26. What do you think? Look great. Okay, well, now that we've gone through all that, I'm going to show you a little trick. How many of you have your calculators left? Okay, on your calculators. Most of you guys have the Casio or the Sharp, don't you? Casio? Okay, I'm trying to remember the exact key on the Casio. I know on the TI, it's an ABC key, looks like that. On the Casio, I believe... And remember, right, it's a key that looks something like this. Just two gray boxes like that. Or it might be X to the gray box, you know, something like this. X with the gray box? Okay. Actually, that's not the one I want. You want one that looks like this. A box over the box like that. Sorry. A solid box over a like, D or something like that. N, D. Okay. N over D. Perfect. Okay, well, the way that button works, let's say I wanted to enter, let's put something in here that actually does something. Make the calculator do some work. Let's enter 12 thirtieths. What you do is you type in 12, press that key, and then type 30. Does that work? I gotta see if you guys are in math type or in linear mode. That that worked when you did that? Reduced it down to two fifths? Perfect. Um, you could also enter something like 42 twentieths. Shoot a two and one tenth. No. Twenty one tenths. Okay, it's gotcha. Which is two and one tenth. Um so it is stuck in math type mode for most of your calculators. Some of your calculators, let's see, let me, i got to come to you look at one of your calculators make sure. Right above your delete key, you've got an SD key. Looks like this. Above the SD key, you have something like that. So you've got that 21, is that 21 tenths still on your screen? Use the second or the shift key, depending on what you guys have. And then press that key, the SD key. Yeah, 
Nope, just press it, and then hit the SD, and then hit equals. And now it changes it to two and one tenth. Okay. So that's what you have to do on that calculator to change it from uh, improper to a mix. You gotta use that second SD or shift SD. If you wanted to enter a mixed number, like three and one fourth, on your calculator, depending on what mode you're in, you should be able to three, press that fraction key, one, press that fraction key, oops, and then four. Nope. Does it does it come up or what does it do? Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the three, then shift, then hit that fraction key. Then you put in the one, then you hit the down arrow to get to the bottom of it. Put in the four. Now it's your calculator is gonna spit out like 13 fourths now. It's not gonna leave it as three and one fourths. So you gotta use that shift SD to, to reduce it. But now you can do all your fractions with this. Now I'm gonna have you do something on here. Um, over on the right side of your keypad, there's something that says mode and setup. If you hit shift, setup, one, it'll have math and it'll have linear on there. Select linear. So it'll say like linear is like number one or number two or something. So hit the two and hit enter. Or whatever it is for linear and hit enter. Now clear it out. Now if you wanted to use the three and one fourth, um, let, let's just do this. Um, use that fraction key. Let's enter in 13 and just hit the fraction key and hit four and hit equals. I'm on the cast so you're on the TI. The TI actually, you, you'll just use the fraction key to enter three and one fourth. You do three, fraction one, fraction four. And on yours, it'll automatically turn it if you entered 13 fourths, it'll automatically put it as, as uh, 3 and 1 fourth. When you do it now, does it automatically change it to 3 and 1 fourth instead of 13 fourths? No? Oh, it just displays it there. So you still have to use the SD key to reduce it down. It displays it differently. I'll leave it up to you guys whether you prefer to have it in linear mode or math type mode. I always prefer linear mode because. Well, let me show you if you do a square root or something like that. Um, if you were to do this right now, if you were to do the square root of 10, you would hit the square root key, type in 10 and hit equals. It'll give you a three point blah, 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 blah. It'll give you a decimal. If you put it back in math type mode and you do a square root on the Casio's, if you do the square root, you type in square root of 10, it'll spit out square root of 10. It's just like that. It won't turn into a decimal. So you have to be in linear mode to make it change your square roots into decimals. So I just wanted to show you those different, different modes on the Casio. How do you get out of linear mode now? You just hit the shift setup and then put it in math. So for fractions, it's all just a matter of how it displays it. It changes how it displays it. But when you start doing the square roots and stuff like that, it'll make a difference. It won't divide out or won't reduce the square root down to a decimal. If it's in math type mode. Can just you go that. back to math and then ask you if you want your result format in math or linear? Yeah, and you can, math mode would put it, if you select math, it'll put it back to where it was before. Right, so what's the difference in the linear mode and math? Um, basically, if you select the math type mode and linear display, it's pretty much exactly like it was before. Okay, for some homework, we're going to look in your little book. Unit 6, 7, 8, and 9. Remember, we're just working on the odds. Check the answers in the back. Make sure you're doing okay with them. I'm going to let you start working. We've got about 8 minutes here to work. I'm going to let you start working in a couple minutes. I'll grab a problem or two and go over them.